Hey, 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 happy Valentine's Day. Tonight, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at D&D Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness. Whoa. So come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dill, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poobah. See, hey, I just proved I'm not bald again. People think I'm like bald because I always wear baseball caps. It's like, no, I wear baseball caps because my hair's always a mess, not because I'm bald. Anyway, welcome aboard. It is Valentine's Day 2020. That's right. It is February 14th. It is a Friday night, too, so all right, pretty cool for Valentine's Day, right? A little Friday night action. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I see we've got some folks in chat already. I'll get to that in just a second. If this is your first time visiting me, and uh, you are watching live, please keep in mind that this is uh, not rocket surgery. I just mainly share a little bit of tabletop gaming news and uh, do an unboxing or first look or pay through of RPG products or do some reviews. Maybe you'll see some interviews. I've got an interview that I'm doing tomorrow that I will talk about in, uh, in just a little bit. So, but regardless, it's very, very casual. Anywho, because this is live, that also means that uh, there's chat available on YouTube. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But I do my best to pay attention to the chat. So if you'd like to say hi, or maybe you've got a question or a comment or something vile to say, no, don't say something vile. Feel free, chime in. I will do my best to respond. Fun. Of course, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you do, don't forget, ring that little bell because it will not only notify you of when the Daily Dope goes live, it'll also inform you when I have standalone videos get posted as well, which I think I might have one or two this weekend. I'm not sure. I'll also talk a little bit about that in just a moment as well. Anywho, whenever you are not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. And please tell a friend or two about both the channel as well as the website itself. The website pulls in loads and loads of visitors. These videos, eh, not so much. All depends. A lot of times it just depends on what I'm covering. So as I mentioned to open the show, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at D&D Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness. I swear, I know at some point tonight I'm going to call this Monster Mayhem. I know it, but that's not what it's called. But we are going to do a little bit of tabletop gaming news. Mention a couple of things as well before we jump into the unboxing at first look. Also, stick around to the end of the show. I have some role-playing game goodness, some PDF love to be handing out. I have eight PDFs, uh, and it's your choice of four different core books, essentially. And uh, I have already chosen the three winners from Twitter, and I have chosen the three winners from YouTube. And two lucky viewers are uh, actually going to win as well. So, pretty sweet. But that's the, the end of the show. So, do you want to point out? Hang tight. If you are watching this after the fact, if you're watching this, say, on Memorex, then, or if you've burned the show onto a CD and you're watching it on your, on your laptop computer, like we used to do with episodes of MST3K way back in the day. Uh, I was going to say, 
take a look in the show notes and you will see um, links to various info and uh, take a peek. I will have timestamps. So I will actually put what, you know, when I announced the winners of the contest. So plus, if you're watching after the fact, I will have a timestamp for when I'm doing the unboxing in case you don't want to uh, catch a wee bit of the latest tabletop gaming news. See what's going on with chat. So we've got Dan from No Enemies here. Happy Friday to you, Dan. The Madman is in the house. Good deal. Heard that uh, through the grapevine, the Madman's gaming night got canceled tonight. For what? Valentine's Day? Doesn't gaming say love? I don't know. I didn't have anybody to give a Valentine's to this year, so. <laughs> no, it's not fine. Don't worry. Uh, so, uh, I had commented about not being bald. Madman says, what's wrong with being bald, huh? Huh? Huh, punk? Flaming Huron is in chat as well. So, uh, so Flaming Huron says, nothing's wrong with being bald, according to their barber, who wants to shave all their hair off. So, and all of a sudden, <coughs> excuse me, out of nowhere came the sneeze. It is very cold down here in the duct tape studio tonight. Do you want to point that out? Today was the coldest day so far this winter in the Chicago area. And I think right now we're right hovering around zero. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Now I do not shoot this in a barn. The duct tape, duct tape studios are not out in some barn or some bunker or something like that. But uh, it is not necessarily heated down here. But of course, there's heat from the house. Uh, Flaming Heron says, uh, burning anything on DVD. Oh, my God. That seems like a lifetime. I was, I'm not even talking about DVD. I'm talking about CDs. Uh, Elliot, my best friend, Elliot Miller, which used to, he used to be part of the gaming gang. At some point in time, maybe he'll return. But uh, anyway back in the day we used to have cds of mystery science theater 3000 and he had just about every episode that was way back in the day when you could actually get the episodes online and you know, not necessarily pirating it wasn't i don't think shout factory had any like vhs cassettes or anything like that so but uh, we were just talking about that not too long ago. All right. So Fleming Heron says, seems weird you didn't save that Valentine's Day game news for today. Uh, are you talking about that role-playing game adventure with the love of Valentine? Wasn't that from Frog God Games, I think? If I remember right. Speaking of Frog God Games, I am going to... I'm supposed to interview Matt Finch tomorrow. Now, we have already tried to set something up twice before... For me to interview Matt. Knock on wood. I will get this in tomorrow. If not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep <laughs> rescheduling this. But I think we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh Swords and Wizardry box set that's kickstarting right now. I think there's maybe 21 days left. 22. Talk a little bit about that. Talk a little bit uh, about Frog God Games, and uh we might start seeing some stuff to review from frog god so pretty cool okay so uh anywho let's move on into the news i've got three news pieces first off this august is going to see the release of the latest uve rosenberg design it is from capstone games i've got the dope on new york zoo <laughs> i just want to say new york minute in new york zoo you're designing an animal park wouldn't you be designing a zoo? Build enclosures, introduce new animals, and raise their offspring. The first player to cover all the construction spaces on their zoo board with enclosure tiles and attractions wins the game. Gameplay is straightforward as you have only two options on your turn. Build a new enclosure in your zoo or populate your zoo with more animals. But be sure to time your actions well since you want your zoo to participate in as many animal breedings as possible. Hey, this is a family show here. What's going on? Just kidding. 
Build your zoo with unique animal encounters and attractions. Populate your zoo with meerkats, flamingos, kangaroos, penguins, and more. And be the first to complete your zoo to win. This is the latest game from acclaimed designer Uwe Rosenberg. New York Zoo is for 1 to 5 players, ages 10 and up, plays in 30 to 60 minutes. We'll carry an MSRP of $39.99 when it arrives August 26th, which is a wee bit out. It's out in the summer. It's actually after Gen Con. And I don't, yeah, honestly, I'm not sure Capstone Games goes to Gen Con. I have never actually spoken to anybody from Capstone Games. This looks interesting. Of course, we've got what, um, oh, it's not Zoo Tycoon. It's the Planet Zoo. Planet Zoo's a big hit right now on PC. And I'm curious here, though. Is it my imagination? Does it seem that Uwe Rosenberg, like, all of his designs now are kind of these, like, Tetris piece puzzle games. Kind of, right? Am I wrong here? Didn't he do? Did he design Baron Park for Mayfair? One of the, one of the final games that came out for Mayfair, and then he's got that. Uh, I don't think it's is it called, like the Spring series, which is from Stronghold Games. Uh, they all kind of have the same sort of putting the pieces together. I don't know. I mean, it's got a different wrinkle. You're you're putting animals into your zoo, but it does seem like a lot of Uwe Rosenberg's designs are very, very similar. Hey, at least they're not like Reiner Knizia's designs, which, I, okay, I should back off Reiner because he has released some new designs lately, but there were a, there was a period for a few years where all it was was just another reskin Retheme, same old stuff. Sometimes year after year, but he's kind of gotten away from that. Okay, so moving right along, this September brings the latest in the Tiny Epic line from Gameland Games. I've got the dope on Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. In Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, breakthroughs in modern science. Have dinosaurs and humans existing side by side? This has allowed for a lucrative industry. Money, money, money. Dino ranching. Independent ranchers have begun farming dinosaurs to sell to the highest bidders for use in their high thrill theme parks. You are one of those ranchers. Do you have what it takes to outranch your opponents and operate the most successful dinosaur farm? Tiny Epic Dinosaurs is a 45-minute, one-to-four-player game of dinosaur ranching, worker placement, and resource management. It features classic Euro game mechanics with unique twists that portray the dangers of farming these prehistoric beasts. Yes, I do know there's actually a phase where I, I think if you don't feed all of your dinosaurs, some of them actually break loose and start feeding on your other dinosaurs. In Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, players control a team of ranchers and will be acquiring, breeding, and selling dinosaurs. A lot of breeding in the news today, huh? The game is played over six rounds, with each round consisting of several short phases. At the end of the game, players will receive victory points for each dinosaur they have, public and private contracts they acquired for their research developments. The player with the most victory points obviously wins the game. Tiny Epic Dinosaurs is, as mentioned, for one to four players, ages 14 and up, probably because of the small pieces. This does not strike me as being very crunchy or difficult to figure out. Should play in about 30 to 45 minutes and will carry an MSRP of $25 when it arrives on September 4th. Nice. I know this did really, really well on Kickstarter. And I am interested to take a peek at this. I'm interested in Tiny Epic Tactics too, but strangely enough, I never really have an opportunity to, to do like reviews for Gameland Games stuff, except when I go to a convention and I talk to Michael Co. I think once he did send me, I think it was Tiny Epic Zombies that uh, was sent for review, which I really enjoyed. 
Uh, I have heard, now I don't know, I have not played it. I have heard uh, some people were not real thrilled with Tiny Epic Max, which uh, was kind of a, a programming your actions sort of game. And uh, I have heard from a few people that they were kind of, I guess it's not their favorite Tiny Epic game. So this looks kind of fun. And I, I think it's kind of funny that we actually have Michael and his wife Little illustrations, basic. They're basically supposed to be them on the cover of the box. <laughs> kind of funny, kind of cute. Uh, Michael's a good guy. Uh, I I run into Michael at a lot of the shows. Had a chance to uh, kind of going off topic here a little bit. <laughs> Last year at Origins Game Fair, uh, that Saturday night, I had an opportunity to to hang out and have a couple of adult beverages with. Uh, Stephen Bonacore and Michael Coe and, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember Bill's name, who, uh, his last name, who does the, uh, he's kind of in charge of all the graphic design for Stronghold. And uh, a few other people kept popping in and out. Uh, Rob Davro, Davro, I've already pronounced that. Uh, he stopped by. It, it was a blast. I had a really good time. I had a really good time. And Bonacore was like, Geez, Jeff, I, I knew you were funny. I didn't realize you were this funny. Right. Just toss a couple of drinks my way, and I can shoot out some zingers. Elliot and I are a pretty good funny team to hang out with at uh, gaming conventions, having a couple of uh, cu couple of beers, pushing back uh, like a pitcher of beer or something like that. Anyway, I am looking forward to checking out Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, if I have an opportunity, if I have a chance. So we will find out. Let's see. So the Man Man says, So far, I've been very happy with the various Tiny Epic games. Friends have all liked them as well. The only Tiny Epic game that I didn't care for was Tiny Epic Defenders. And even then, I didn't think it was a bad game. It was just a game. I'm not I'm not keen on games that... So what I like to refer to is the game plays you, you don't play the game. Whereas everything is just... Reaction, reaction, reaction. You're not really having an opportunity to game plan uh, a proactive uh, strategy or anything like that. Pandemic, to me, plays the same exact way. Just standard pandemic. Once again, it's just you're reacting to everything. So it, to me, it feels like the game is playing me, which makes it not a game that I'm a big fan of. I'll play it. It's not horrible, but anyway. So, uh, yes, I, I like Tiny Epic Galaxies, I think is fantastic. I think, I don't know if it's out yet, but uh, there's like super tiny Epic Galaxies, which is supposed to be in a really itty bitty box. Uh, I know that was coming out and I think it was like 15 bucks. Maybe I'm off with that price. I know it's certainly not 25 because that's usually the regular price of Tiny Epic Games. So uh, there's that. I like Tiny Epic Galaxies a lot. Uh, Tiny Epic Western, I think, is a very underrated game. Really enjoy that. I think people st stay away from that because there's cards involved with it that give it kind of like a poker look because you're kind of almost playing like three-card poker. But it's, it's not gambling, right? It's, you know, you're just coming up with numbers, right? So, uh, yeah, so I, I like all the time. Tiny Epic Zombies really dug that. What am I forgetting? I got them all stacked up behind me. Uh, yeah, I haven't really forgotten anything that I've got. So I, I am missing a few, so. Uh, so the Man Man says, I agree with you regarding all the stated Tiny Epic games. Thank you, Mad Man. I, I just say Mad Man. All right, my final news piece. Now available in PDF from Onyx Path Publishing. It's a new supplement for Vampire the Requiem. Here's the dope on Night Horrors Spilled Blood. <laughs> Magic is at the heart of what we do here at the Esoteric Order of the Golden Star. Is that like a fast food place? With it, you can find your heart's desire and riches beyond belief. I just need a small down payment and signed here on the dotted line. Lady Jezebel Eliza Zillard. 
This book includes antagonists for both Vampire the Requiem and other Chronicles of Darkness games. Night Horrors Spilled Blood includes 10 new bloodlines to serve as both antagonists and player character options. Two new antagonists, Convents, or I should say Covenants. Yeah, let's grab a sip here. Much better. Two new antagonistic covenants, several lost clans with reasons to both hate and work with kindred. Myriad of antagonists who prey on vampires either as diseases or those who need vitae. Do you want to point out, this is an advanced PDF, so Onyx Path will be collecting errata for a few weeks before preparing the final PDF and the hardcover versions of the book. But anyone who purchases this PDF now, of course, is going to get the final updated version of the PDF added to their library at Drive-Thru RPG automatically. So now you know the 145-page PDF is available at Drive-Thru RPG. It is available for $14 and 99 cents. Very cool. Uh, somebody correct me. I am not the biggest World of Darkness aficionado, I guess we'll say. Is Vampire the Requiem, is that the one that's set in the Dark Ages? Or is that Vampire Dark Ages? I don't, I honestly don't know. And plus, I mentioned it before, I find it kind of confusing who does what as far as Vampire goes. Because we've got Onyx Path Publishing, Obviously enough, we have Modifius Entertainment. We do know that Paradox Interactive owns them. Waiting for uh, Crusader Kings 3 coming out next month. Of course, it's a Paradox game, so we'll have to wait about six months before we can kind of give it our final judgment. Because for some reason, Paradox does, doesn't like to release stuff that's like in a, a completely finished, wow, this is awesome state. Usually takes about a year. Anyway, uh, and then you've got White Wolf, and it's uh, so white. But White Wolf is owned by Paradox, and I don't know. Like I said, it's just very strange. Very, very strange. I would also say that Vampire has a very unique fan base, and always has. So, let's see, uh, Fleming Heron says, yeah, I have Vampire the Requiem, but I can say I've never read the PDFs. Says, uh, Nefarious Coel, good to see you. And, uh, Melwinius Cyrano Ulfram from York is in chat. Good to see you, Melwinius. Good to have you join us. Well, it's happy Valentine's Day, right? Let's see, so uh, Nefarious says, I think the Requiem was an older one. Hard to keep up with that mess these days though. See, that's how I kind of look at it. So you got the you got V5, which is essentially this vampire, the masquerade, which I reviewed the core book. I thought was interesting. Personally, it's not my bag of tricks. I would not run it. Uh plus I do not have any interest even playing if my character is monstrous. It's just, just like when I play any role-playing game, doesn't matter if it's face to face or if it's on the computer or if it's a console or anything like that i play a good guy i don't play bad guys all right anyway uh so melvinia says i only have v20 a vampire vampire i have to admit when it first came out long long time ago and of course i kind of have a soft spot for vampire because the fact that white wolf was based in chicago i would i'm born and raised in chicago so it was very interesting. It was super, super, super rules light. It had the pips. It's still pretty similar. It's a little crunchier. It's still kind of similar to the storyteller system, I think it was called. But, uh, and, you know, I just thought it was pretty cool. It, But it just still, I picked up the books, and I picked up a lot of them. There were a lot of splats for that boy, I'll tell you. I didn't get them all. I got the first few. Very, very interesting. Very, very cool. Liked it a lot. We used to go to a nightclub downtown Chicago. Back when I went to nightclubs a lot. 
And uh, we went to one place where I think it was like Wednesday nights was kind of like a vampire night on a certain floor of the place. And it was, like I said, some of the folks who are really into vampire are unique. Anyway, I am going to get into the unboxing and first look at D&D Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness. Whew, said it correct again. In just a moment. Did want to mention, if you saw my review yesterday, of Schalt from... Uh, uh, what the heck is... It's Car... What is it? Car... Thalus, I think I believe it's it's pronounced Kirk Thalus Publishing. Anyway, it's by Vinger Satanus. Anyway, so I did a review of this yesterday. Kind of prefaced it, you know, with some some things. And uh I guess people are pissed. And some people are upset. People are upset that the bad man who says bad things they don't like on a blog, their own blog, on the interwebs. Uh, I reviewed a uh, gaming product that he is responsible for. So they were upset. Got a couple of emails today. It's not like all that many people had watched the video either. So I was like, whatever. So uh, one one commenter had said, oh, well, what what is the uh, the quote that's um, associated with Edmund Burke? Who actually really never said this? That's another thing I love. I love I love these doofuses out there who will quote something because they've heard supposedly somebody said this, and it's like, oh yeah, and it's it's basically along the lines of uh, for evil men to prosper, good men have to do nothing. Like, come on, give me a break. The guy's a blogger, and he writes OSR role playing game books. The fuck's he gonna do, right? It's not like I sat there and said, "Hey, this Heinrich Himmler guy." I gotta say, you know, he, he he's got bad rap. He's he's actually really cool, really nice guy. I like what he's saying. Never said that. So, if uh, if people are out there, you know, if you're watching, you're upset about the um, Schalt review last night, uh, and you're unsubscribing. Bye. Don't know what to tell you. See ya. I'm not going to lose any sleep and cry about it. Like, put your big boy pants or big girl pants on and deal with it. It's like, so what? Anyway, I, God, it's gotten to the point where just... And I am a liberal, and I still sit there and I'm like, this political correctness is a bunch of bullshit. It's like these people who are woke are so full of shit half the time. Got all these people out there who are just like, it's like, I, like I said last night, it's like, oh, you're saying something that I don't agree with or I don't want to hear. La, 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 la. God, man. No wonder we are such a fractured society here in the U.S. All right. Anyway, um, enough of that. I was just going to say, I, I'm just trying to point out what, People threat. Well, I'm, I'm 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 unsubscribing from your channel. What should, should I do like that? That uh, don't pollute commercial where they show the Native American and the tear goes like, running down. That isn't gonna happen, folks. Okay, so let's see. Um, you don't laugh at Office Space. You're out. Right with you. Office Space is great. Another thing I will mention, of course, I know that people who are watching live are like, Jeff, you're going you're gonna to show this? What's going on here? And I'd like to know who won the contest. We'll get to it. Don't worry. Uh, it's only 7.35. We try to do about an hour show. Uh, anyway, I was going to say that uh, I, I talk about this all the time. Most of Mel Brooks's movies would never get made today. Ever. Blazing Saddles. No way. And the funny thing is, there are a lot of people out there on my side of the political aisle who are like, oh, that movie. And it's like, what? Mel Brooks rips on everybody. No one is safe from his zingers. 
including his own ethnicity and the person who comes out like looking like the most normal person out of all of it the one who's the most uh ingenious and intelligent is Cleavon Little's sheriff so it's like how can you not like this movie right I can get it if you don't like the humor I understand that but come on all right and wasn't that actor not even Native American in the uh give a hoot don't well it wasn't give a hoot it was the don't pollute no I believe he was I believe he was a Native American almost positive he was a uh, a Native American Yes, everybody's like, I love Mel Brooks. I love Mel Brooks. Yeah, I, Mel Brooks is great. I uh, I had an opportunity to chat with Max Brooks at C2E2 a couple years ago. Off the record, uh, he was actually there for, I think it was for V Wars, his Vampire Wars thing. And uh, we were just chat chatting a little bit. And uh, I was talking about you know, how I thought his dad was the best. I love watching stuff on YouTube just where he's doing interviews with people in that. All right, so Kabuki Kid says, yeah, come on. His first movie was the producers with Springtime for Hitler and Germany. Good to see you, Kabuki Kid. Thanks for popping in. All right, anyway, moving right along. Let's, uh, let's jump on into the unboxing, right? So, as I mentioned previously at the open of the show, I am going to be unboxing and taking a first look at D&D Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness. It is from Wizards of the Coast, designed by Jordan Komar and Roscoe Wetlaufer. Taking a stab, hopefully I'm close. Art is provided by Cam Kendall. The game is for two to six players, ages eight and up, plays in around 10 to 15 minutes. They say 10 minutes, uh, we've had games go about 15. D&D Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness will be available February 28th. Got to admit, when this was actually announced, the original release date was supposed to be today. It was supposed to be for Valentine's Day that this was coming out. Something else had happened because uh, my understanding is this will not be in stores until February 28th. We'll carry an MSRP of $24 and... 99 cents. So let's swing on over to the uh, new setup that I've got the camera overhead right in front of me. But um, dun, 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 dun. Uh, I gotta I gotta figure out what's going on. So it was funny. So uh, my forward facing camera I had mentioned yesterday. I said eh, it looks a little overexposed. I got a couple of emails. People said, hey, I actually liked it. <laughs> being overexposed i'm like all right i won't mess around too much with the exposure for some strange reason the way i've got the camera set up here and the settings i've got i'm having a hard time getting a little lighter exposure to this it's a little darker uh than i would like but it's not terrible all right so we've got DD dungeon mayhem monster madness this is an expansion but it's standalone for dungeon mayhem which is a D&D card game. It is super, super simple to learn. Yes, of course, good old Pinky's down here, sounding like she's being murdered. Thought I'd be quiet, see if you can, you can pick it up. Sometimes when I say, oh, Pinky's down here making noise, this, the mic doesn't actually pick it up, but uh, other times it certainly does. All right, so Dan from No Enemies here is like, people, hey, I thought Dan was already here earlier. Was he here earlier and then left and came back? Maybe not. All right, so uh, this is standalone expansion. And one thing that's kind of cool here is that it's gonna, it comes in a bigger box. Uh, Dungeon Mayhem, the actual core game, comes in a smaller tuck box. And we also had, I got to point out, Dungeon Mayhem's over at uh, my nephew's. So we also had the Battle for Baldur's Gate expansion. So you had a little tuck box. You got this little box here. I don't know why this isn't over at <laughs> my brother's house. I don't know. 
So now we're going to get uh, a bigger box so we can store everything in it. It's also for up to six players. Originally, Dungeon Mayhem is for two to four. Uh, so on the back, it's time for Monsters and Mayhem. In Dungeon Mayhem, Monster Madness, you play as one of six epic D&D &D monsters, each with their own way to charm, crush, disintegrate, or devour their foes. Pit these cunning creatures against any other Dungeon Mayhem deck and store all your cards in this monster-sized box. <laughs> they don't know monster size until they see that Empyreal box, which you will be seeing again at the end of the show. Uh, then select your favorite and prepare for mayhem. Of course, do want to point out that the fine folks over at Wizards of the Coast, or I guess I should say the fine folks at Wizards of the Coast's PR company, who are very, very cool, were kind enough to send this along to me. I actually, I didn't realize that the release date had been set back to the 28th. And I thought, oh, well, you know, sometimes the board game side of things don't come my way. But I get all the D&D books. So uh, I reached out to the PR company and said, uh, was I on the reviewer list? And my contact wrote back and said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there was a delay getting these out. I'm like, oh, okay. cool." So here we have a nice sturdy box. Actually, this is, this is actually a really nice sturdy box. We've got the rules. Very, very simple to play this. I am going to take a guess. We are probably not going to be seeing much different in, uh, in these rules as we had in previous editions. Well, I should say in, say, Dungeon Mayhem and as well as the, uh, the Battle of Baldur's Gate expansion. So we get a little bit of how to play. First time you play... Getting ready. Time for mayhem. Your hit points winning the game. Talking about the card types. Attack, defense, healing. Now we've got some new rules for five to six players. So we have a zone of influence. Aha. Okay. Cool. And when a player gets knocked out, they become a vengeful ghost. Okie doke. Then we get some... Frequently asked questions as well. Very, very nice. Like I said, I remember it took all of five minutes to teach Cameron and his girlfriend Lexi and their friend Cameron. I forget, there was somebody else who was with us too. So, oh, look at this. We get some, uh, some separators here. Look at that. So we get uh, the new monsters. So we, we get uh, dividers, basically, for the new monsters. So we've got Lord Cinderpuff, who I think is like a young dragon. Beholder with big stick on eyelashes. Check, says Nefarious Girl. Medusa with a perm? Yes, check. Is that an owl wearing a party hat? It is an owl bear. I can tell you that much. So we've got Lord Cinderpuff, who I believe is supposed to be like a young dragon. Hoots Magoots, which is the owlbear. We've got Dr. Tenteculus, who is a mind flayer. we got Blorp. <laughs> I just, it's funny. I think that's got kind of funny. So we got Blorp, who is uh, a gelatinous cube. We've got Delilah Deathray, who is, I want to say she's a beholder. What is the other monster that's like a beholder in D&D? &D? Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but I always think beholder. And I, I know there's been a few times where I'm like, oh, it's a beholder. Some of you are like, no, 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 that's, uh, that's the other thing. I'm like, oh, sorry. Then we got <laughs> Mimi Chase, who is uh, a mimic. So, and then we've got the dividers for the other characters that are in the game. So we've got uh, these three here, and this one here, were all in the original uh, Dungeon Mayhem. 
And then we got Minsk and Boo! Yes, yes. Uh, for Battle of Baldur's Gate, or Battle for Baldur's Gate, and uh, another character as well. So that's kind of cool. So now we got some dividers here. We do get a, uh, a deck box if we want to use that. So that's nice. Got a nice insert. And this actually, that was like so, set inside. So we got the insert. It is plastic. It is not paper. Actually, that's better plastic than I'm used to seeing in some game boxes. Sometimes it's super, super, super thin. I Tyrant. Uh, maybe that's it. It's not Eye of the Deep, Kabuki Kid. Thanks for the for the guess, though. I think it might be the Eye Tyrant. And I'm like, what? Like, that is a beholder. It's like, no. All right, so we've got that. Let's take a look at some of these cards. I will zoom in. So those of you who have been watching the Daily Dope and my other standalone videos for quite some time, I'm kind of curious while I open these decks up. How is the uh, the video quality on the overhead here? Because to me, it looks like it's quite a bit better when I swapped out the cameras. And you will see that as we zoom in. Because for one, one of the reasons why I want to swap out cameras is the Nikon doesn't allow me to zoom in really close. Whereas... The Panasonic, which is actually a much more expensive camera, is, uh, I can zoom in pretty well. So I can zoom out pretty far, too. And let's zoom on in and get a look at the decks. So this is, okay, so each of, each. I can, I can kind of even tell you a little bit how to play. So. This will be a review that'll be like, boom, easily done. So each of the players are going to get a card where they're going to track their hit points. And they're also going to get a card that tells them basically a breakdown of the different symbols on the cards. What do these cards do? Uh, so let's say uh, the Mad Men says overhead is looking good. Cool. Cool deal. So each player is going to get that. Oh, what do we got here? <laughs> That's kind of weird. Oh yeah, that's right. It's by color. For some reason, I was I was thinking there's a uh, little symbol uh, or a little image of the character, but that's not the case. It's just these two have, and it's color coded. All right, so let's take a quick look. Well, we'll zip through these. So we've got evil sneer. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, eviler sneer. Peaceful nap, investment opportunity, a couple of those. Wisdom of ages. And of course, this this game is super, super easy to, to understand. So it's basically kind of like one of these like draw a card, play a card kind of things. So you get shields, the black damage. You get uh, the plus, you draw cards. Cross swords is dealing damage. This is a lightning bolt. Just means you can play an extra card and then you can recover a hit point with every heart and then we have mighty powers each of the characters will have a mighty power that they can use so all right jason brooke is popped in good to see you jason thanks for stopping in to chat tonight Hi, hey doug who is doug i'm kind of curious who doug might be so i don't know Says, uh, Jeff and people, the time is nigh. I must be going. All right, cool deal, Dan. Hey, uh, enjoy your Valentine's Day with your lady. So, uh, she gave you a little extra time to watch tonight, huh? <laughs> okay, anyway. So, we got Wisdom of Ages, Wall of Money, Mob of Lawyers. That's a good defensive card. Cobalt Maid, Ancient Anger. So it allows you to, to score a hit and play another card. 
tooth and claw. So we've got a few tooth and claws, one with two and one with three. Wing Buffett, Bull Markets, Murders and Acquisitions, two of those. Liquidate Assets. So I, I see that our, uh, our young dragon is an entrepreneur. Hostile Takeover, got three of those. So there is our deck for the, uh, what's his name? It's not on here. It's like Lord C Cinder Bash or something like that. Then we've got the Mimic. This is Mimi the Mimic, if I remember. That's what it was saying there. So once again, you got your two cards. Your player aid card and your hit point card. Let's see what we've got as far as these cards here. Definitely just a mirror. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's definitely just a mirror. So these are the special abilities. So what does that say? Play this card as a copy of any other shield card in play. Okay. It's not a trap. A book cannot bite. Uh, it looks like another mighty power. A couple of those. Oh, actually three of those. Completely safe door. Obviously enough. Just another coat rack. Harmless pile of rocks. It's one of the aspects of Dungeon Mayhem I thought was kind of funny. It, 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 it's absolutely not serious at all. The games play really quick. It's got a little bit of a sense of humor to it, especially with these monsters right now. A potted plant. Honest. And as you can see, it looks as if they mean potted as in drunk. Actually, an empty chest. So, nefarious calls. We're talking about what could, what is the thing that's not the beholder, right? And I'm sure somebody's going to toss a comment out. And nefarious Coel is like, I haven't looked inside Monster Manual 2 since 1991. And Kabuki Kid's like, I have a can on my lap. Otherwise, I would go check mine. The comfy chair. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Interestingly enough, uh, last night I was watching, I rewatched series one of Faulty Towers. I like to watch that every year or two. And I'm kind of in a Monty Python, or at least the Pythons after the fact, mood because of Terry Jones passing away. So I've been watching actually a lot of the uh, Terry Jones historical documentaries that he had done. Whatever's out on YouTube that I can watch. Unfortunately, it's lousy like 480p. Okay, so we've got a well-fitted hat. Non-carnivorous couch. So that is Mimi the Mimic. Let's see what we got here for Hoots Magoots. Once again, we got the player... Aid card and the hit point card to the face. <laughs> is he like a? Is this going to be like wrestling stuff? All bear boogie. Each player may do a little dance, and then draw a card. You draw a card for each player who danced. For my next trick, oh wow, that's a pretty po powerful card. It's like it's uh, a mighty power. Plus, does a hit. And you get to play another card. Grand finale. So I see Hoots Magoots is supposed to be like like circus performing. Albert, yes, that's kind of funny. Very very fast. Look out below. My user pick is the killer rabbit tearing the knight's throat out in Holy Grail. Uh, says Nefarious. That's pretty, that's pretty funny. It's just a rabbit. Crushing hug. Oh, I love you. Wise as an owl. Strong as a bear. All right. Talk to my agent. Send in the clowns. 
All right, so that is Hoots Magoots' deck. Let's see what else we got here. This is the Beholder. We're pretty sure it's a Beholder. I'm 99.9% .9 positive that this is supposed to be a Beholder. So Flaming Heron says, I just loved all Monty Python stuff, so Faulty Towers is just more goodness. Only thing I ever say about negative about Monty Python's Flying Circus is the fact that some of the gags did just kind of run on. That they had lost, you know, they they run out of gas, but they kept going. And they even knew that. They even commented how how many skits that they would do that were like, oh, he just didn't come up with an end. We just had Terry do some animation for us. It's like, okay. All right, praise me. Charm Ray. Death Ray. And you notice how they're coming, coming out of different eyes. Rays for days. All right, look out there. Beauty Barrage. Cuter than you. Fashion Police. Double Trouble. Oh, she's looking. She's not looking too happy there. <laughs> mirror, mirror. Hey, wonder if the, is that the mimic? It's just the mirror. Tyrant of Beauty. Miss Piggy Beholder. Kind of a little. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit nefarious. Kermit's, Kermit was obviously goblin in disguise. One of those Pathfinder gobs. I, yes, I have to say, I really do like the Pathfinder goblins. Okay, make it work. Laser show. All right, so. That is our Beholder's deck. Got two more to go. So we've got the Mind Flare. I, can't, I just, I have the impression that this is going to be pretty funny. The Blorp, the Gelatinous Cube. So Kabuki Kid says that uh, their PBS station had Python on every night or daily. I would, I would assume it was at night. See, here in Chicago Channel 11, we only got it on Sunday nights. And it would go, uh, we got Dave Allen at large, which was actually a really good show. And then we got Monty Python and then Doctor Who. So, uh, so yeah, so usually it was about, I think, 9 o'clock is when our time, you know, 9, nine o'clock Central Time. I think it was like 9 o'clock we had Dave Allen, then Monty Python, and then Doctor Who, which could be an hour long. <laughs> Could be two hours long. The way, the way the PBS did the uh, Doctor Who episodes, it was like you never knew exactly how long it was going to be on. And God forbid if they were doing one of their their uh, donation drives, their subscription drives, it'd be like, oh my gosh, please, I have school in the morning, please. <laughs> it's almost 2 o'clock. All right, so here we go with the Mind Flare. We got Mind Games. Tell me about your mother. So the Mind Flayer is supposed to be a, like uh, a psychiatrist. Mind Blast. PhD in psychology. There we go. Ego Whip. Id Insulation. Sip Tea. Well... That heals uh, heals him up and gets a draw card. Super ego whip. Diagnosis evil. Relax after work. Up therapy. Jeez, it's kind of funny. And then we get just a nibble. Enthralled thrall. Okay. And receptionist. 
Okay, so that is the Mind Flayer deck. And then we got Blorp. I think it said it was Blorp. The Gelatinous Cube. Who has, looks like it's, uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be like a gnome. I'm, a, I'm taking a guess it's a gnome. So uh, Nefarious Coel said, said it looked like Super Ego Disco to me. Was it Super Ego Disco? Let's take a look. Ooh, Super Ego Whip. I was going to say, what the, what, what's going on with the camera? <laughs> Make it English not look right? Okay, so let's see what we got for Blurp. Hugs. Here I come. Burped up bones. Former friends. It's uh, now he's a skeleton. The little guys inside of here. Slime time. Ends up becoming a skeleton. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Combat cubed. D6 of Doom. Little skulls is the pips. Fastest cube alive. <laughs> Gelatinous cube just looks like he's having such a good time. Or she. I don't know. I, I, I can't uh, figure out gender identity with gelatinous cubes. Sugar Rush. Acid Burp. Open wide. Arcane appetizer. Oh, we got a different guy in there, huh? Cleric a la slime. And cubes have feelings too. Couple of those. Yep, couple of those. So those are the decks. Let's put these back into. The box here. We can zoom back out a little bit. I guess we can get everything in the shot here. So we've got different decks. So this is kind of, you know what? Let's real quick pop these out. So we can put the cards back in rather than just shoving them into a big box. Only take a second. Oops. Delilah Death Ray. Oh, it was Lord Cinderpuff. And Dr. Tenac uh, Tentaculus. All right, come on. I will point out the cardstock's not real thick on these, but that's okay. Why does this seem like... This isn't going to be the right way to put these together. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so here we've got him. Is there enough space? Yeah, there is. For a second I was like, there isn't going to be enough space? And there we go. With Lord Cinderpuff. Let's get Delilah Death Ray in there. The, uh, was it, was it Lila? Where, where is this? Nice thing. Where's the, for Mimi, La whatever. It's like one, two, three, four, five. Did I not punch one out? I didn't. Duh. Yes, it is. It is Mimi. There we go. I thought it was Mimi the Mimic. Easy peasy. We'll probably play this this weekend. I right, dummy me. I should have done it like this. I'll fix it. I'll fix it later on. Put the blurp in. Hello, blurp. And Hoots Magoots. 
Yeah, I didn't do this right. Okay, that's no big deal. He's supposed to go there. Go like that. Anyway, so that's cool. I like how we've got uh, like a little storage solution for your Dungeon Mayhem game. I'll put those back in. Once again, we also have uh, a deck box if you just wanted to bring the uh, monster madness with you. Uh, I believe we just tossed this out now that we got the cards in there. So we've got the insert, we've got the six decks, we've got the dividers, as well as some little hit point markers and little tokens that represent the characters. And that is what we find when we take everything from D&D Dungeon Madness. Mon or, see, I knew I was going to mess this up. At some point, I knew I was going to mess the name up. D&D Dungeon Mayhem <laughs> Monster Madness. And as you can see, I'm not looking at the box. I'm looking at the camera. So we've got, let's take a look, see what was going on with the chat here. Uh, art really didn't match what I thought at the title. I'm not sure what people were talking about there. Uh, when a mommy and daddy gelatinous cube love one another. There you go. It's the, yeah, Kabuki Kid says, uh, gelatinous cubes are a dungeon's Roomba. Uh, good deal. Cool deal. All right. Yes, and the fairy says, yeah, those are nice card dividers. Yeah, actually, this is a nice box. This is this is a nice, this is nice thick box too. So it's not uh, not, not like really. Actually, this is, this insert here is pretty thick too, and this just gets tossed out. All right. So I will have a review of. Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness in the very, very near future. I'm trying to do some gaming this week, and but uh, weather's supposed to be crappy. Might try Monday, because once again, I'm taking Monday off for the holiday. So let's swing back over to the other camera here. There we go. So before I reveal the winners of the contest that I had, let me talk about what's coming up on next week's shows. So, before D&D Dungeon Mayhem Monster Madness showed up at my door today, I was originally going to unbox and take a first look at Imperial uh, Steam, or it's Spells and Steam, yep, Spells and Steam, which is from Level 99 Games. This is a massive box. I know a gray day last night was saying that they wanted to see me take the plastic off with my teeth. But uh, and I know, I think it was, uh, I think it was Flaming Huron who's like, yeah, I'd like to see you open that box up, Jeff. I'm really curious what's in there. So, because it's pretty heavy. So this will be on Tuesday's show. Wednesday's show, I will finally review Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea from GMT Games. That'll be War Game Wednesday. Oh, it's, it doesn't have to be a War Game. Thursday, we're going to take a look at a couple of Delta Green releases. Unfortunately, I left one of them upstairs because I was just taking a peek at it. But uh, we're going to open up the Need to Know, which is kind of the Quick Start rules, as well as the Game Master screen or Keeper screen. Or, oh gosh, what, is, what do they call the, the, uh, the Game Master in that? Off the top of my head. Oh, I'm going to have to take a look behind me, right? The handler. That's it. So this is kind of a, a handler's screen. We're also going to look at the uh, the brand new Adventure softcover supplement that came out. Uh, X Alobene or something like that. I... But we'll be looking at that on Thursday. And on Friday, yes, I will actually finally get around to reviewing Thieves' Den, which is from Daily Magic Games. And it's actually a really good game. We really enjoy this. So we will be jumping into that as well. All right, so... Uh, looks like there's a lot in the box. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, it, From what I can tell, and I just took a peek at it, I tend to go into my unboxings completely blind. I do not look into a bunch of information about what's what the game is or anything like that so that's why a lot of times i'm guessing it oh yeah i think maybe 
yeah, maybe you do this with it. And you are like, what are you, an idiot? What kind of review is this? It's like, it's not a review. It's an unboxing. It's right in the title. There's no mention of review anywhere. But uh, it's supposed to be, I believe it's like an 18xx game. So it's a railroad game set in like a fantasy world of like burgeoning technology, something like that. I mean, it sounds pretty wild. I think it's a $100 game. I'm going to have to double check. Double check on the MSRP on that. Uh, anyway, so that is what's coming up on next week's shows. As I mentioned, once again, it will be uh, no show on Monday. Yes, Fleming Heron says, Handler's Guide? Yep, it is the Handler's Guide. So Nefarious says, oh my God, my Hellboy Kickstarter box is stupid. Just like that cardboard planetoid Gloomhaven box. Uh, I am not familiar with what's going on with the Hellboy uh, Kickstarter. So Kabuki Kid says, Steampunk Gnome 18XX. I don't know if there's gnomes in it, but uh, very well could be. But like I said, it looks like there's a lot in the box. And the box has heft to it. So it's not just a big empty box that I'm jiggling around. All right, so finally, my last thing we're going to tackle tonight is the winners of the contest. So I uh, ran a contest. Yes, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. So I ran a contest. Uh, I've got eight PDF copies to give away. Uh, it is basically your choice. All righty. I don't need to show all these all over again. Just show one that's got them all. There we go. That's good. Oh. The Kabuki Kid says, yeah, I just thought, you know, how gnomes are the tech guys. I'm not a big gnome fan in my fantasy role playing. Uh, yeah. uh, to me, to me, gnomes are kind of like uh, dwarves. Dwarves and halflings getting together. Cats and dogs living together. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so basically, I chose three people who won on Twitter, three people who won on YouTube, and two people are going to win who are watching live right now now so i already chose the winners for twitter as well as uh youtube so first off we're gonna go with the twitter winners and i don't know what it is about contests on twitter that people just don't look at the rules of the, the contest because basically all you had to do is be a follower of the gaming gang like the tweet Retweet the contest tweet. Super easy. A lot of people were liking it. A lot of people were retweeting it. They were not following. So basically that means they weren't in the running. So. Womp, womp, womp. So the winners from Twitter is Paul Baldwin. At Paul J. Baldwin. Orcus Dorcus. Hey, it's... I don't create the nicknames. I'm just saying. Uh, at Hail Orcus Darkus and Stormforger at Stormforger underscore P. So if any of you are watching, uh, I will actually, you got to make sure that, well, what I'll do is I will follow you so that I can send you a message, but you're going to be able to choose Aliens the Role Playing Game, Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. Fate of Cthulhu or The Expanse. So let's say who they're from, right? Let's throw a little, throw a little love out to their publishers. So Alien, the role-playing game, is from Free League Publishing. Odyssey of the Dragon Lords is from Modifius Entertainment. Fate of Cthulhu is from Pinnacle Entertainment Group. I always forget to say group. And then The uh, Expanse is from Green Ronin Publishing. So those are the winners from Twitter. On YouTube, it was a bit easier. You just had to be a subscriber. And you had to also comment on a video as well. Easy peasy. So we've got the winners here. Uh, and I've, I've got to say, two of them are actually watching live right now. 
So the winners are Will Burton, who usually watches the show after the fact, The Madman, and I already know what PDF The Madman's going to want, Odyssey of the Dragon Lord, as well as Jason Brooke. Yes, Jason Brooke. And it's kind of funny because Jason Brooke's comment was something like, I forget what, what game it was. And they were like, XYZ, please. <laughs> they're like, is that real? Am I going to count that as a comment? Yeah, I guess. I guess. So, um, although, it, I think for some reason, Jason thinks my name is Doug. That's why earlier it was like, hey, Doug. I'm like, who is Doug? And then I was busy talking, and I don't know what the response was. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, yes, the madman. Well, your check cleared, so you're a winner. I also pointed out that two people watching live are also going to have an opportunity to win. So I need to know who we've got watching live now it's possible you just hung out watching the show and you don't jump into chat and that's fine i have absolutely no you, i don't even like using the term lurker you're just a viewer just don't jump into chat so i i need to do here is oh okay nefarious is doug thank you well because it was like hi doug it was like like what Oh, look at that. Nefarious gave the last name out, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get ready for spam. Okay. Yes, Jeff Doug McAleer. It's Michael. Actually, it's Jeffrey Michael. Who's in chat? Uh, just chime in. Just uh, you can put I'm, I'm here. Uh, or who's watching live? Type in chat. I'm here so that I know uh, how many people we've got. And while you're doing that, let me find some dice. It's kind of funny. I'm sitting here like, uh, so what do I have? That, oh, here we go. Tank tool. Like, what is, what do I have here that's got some dice? Is everything around me right now is kind of all diceless or actually... Uh, crap, Tank Tool's diceless, too. I know, that's Fleming here on saying the same thing. That's what I'm laughing about. It's like so many board games and no dice. And the funny thing is, I was going to bring down my Crown Royal bag. And, uh, which has my big collection of dice. Yes, I am really old school. My dice bag is a Crown Royal bag. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Come on, I gotta have something that's got dice. Man, this is, this is ticking me off. Okay, so, who do we have? So the Madman says, I ever used Crown Royal bags too. Yeah, let me see if I can get a, uh, do a random generator. Pull that up real quick. Yes, wow, this this show just came to a screeching halt. Okay, so let me go back over here to the chat. Yeah, Twilight Circle only has six sided dice. So that's why I think we've got more than six people watching live. I don't know because I don't actually pull up YouTube's page for the stream because it it's overkill because I have a preview already running for the program that I use. Okay, so yes, Phantom Leader does have a D10. So who wants me in the running here? I, I'm assuming we got Kabuki Kid. Let's go back. So Kabuki Kid says present flaming here on chime. So that's two. All 
Are we doing two? What are we drawing for? Two more winners for the free PDFs. I, I'm doing eight PDFs to give away. I have two left. So that's what I was doing for the live viewers. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Flaming Huron. The Furious is like, only thing I lack is Odyssey. When one a hog, the others. <laughs> uh, just threw that voice in there. Okay, so Nefarious Coel's in too. So we got three. We got three. Okay, counting down. I'm only going to give a couple more seconds for anybody to chime on in. I think pretty much everybody else watching won something. So, there we go. Uh, all right. So, let's do this. All right. So, our first winner would be... It is Nefarious Coel. So uh, I've got one, two, three. And two came up. So uh, that is that. So, yeah. Uh, so it's only three. And uh, otherwise, everybody else is sleeping, which I can understand. I probably put a lot of people to sleep. Okay, let's do it again. Uh, so basically, we've got Kabuki Kid is one. And... We've got uh, Fleming Huron is three, right? Because Nefarious just won. I know there's three, three contestants. I can't even keep it straight. All right. And the winner is Kabuki Kid. Got a, got the number one. Pretty easy. I could have just got a six-sided die, right? Well, the D3. All right. So what, uh, what we're going to do here is... Uh, you probably already know this. My email address is jeffmaclear at thegaminggang.com. It is down there in the lower right corner. So shoot me an email so I've got your email address so I can send you a link for the download for the PDF of your choice. So you got to tell me which one you want. Alien the Role Playing Game, The Expanse, Odyssey of the Dragon Lords, or Fate of Cthulhu, one of those four are yours. Uh, as far as the people on YouTube, I am going to put them in the show notes. So once again, hopefully they will contact me. Same thing. Hopefully they watch the show. Down now. So I know Will Burton will catch this. So once again, just contact me, Jeff McAleer at thegaminggang.com. Folks who went on Twitter, I'm just going to reach out. I'll follow them on Twitter. So I can shoot them an email. So there you have it. Nice giveaway. Nice little uh, Valentine's Day giveaway to show how much I love and appreciate everybody who follows the show and goes to the website. There you go. It was method to my madness. Surprised nobody figured out. It was, you know, I was doing the contest. It was St. Valentine's Day. I was doing it. So uh, that is it. As I mentioned, no show on Monday. I will be back tuesday at the usual time and that's when we will take a look at april i think that's how it's pronounced i'm going to try to find out how it's pronounced that huge massive box i will be doing an unboxing and a first look at that as well so if you like this video please give it a quick thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you do don't forget ring that little bell because it will not only notify you when the stream goes live for most people, within a minute or two. Some people, it takes hours. But it'll also tell you when I upload some standalone videos, of which there might be one or two this weekend. Not positive, but maybe. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Everybody have a great weekend. Enjoy if you have the Monday off for President's Day. Enjoy the three-day weekend. If not, enjoy your two-day weekend. Hopefully everybody has a very safe weekend as well. I will be back on Tuesday. So, of course, until then, happy trails. Of course, it's like, come on, where's the outro vid? What's going on? Actually, I threw me off because I took a peek. Any last things in chat that I needed to cover? But it doesn't look like it, so...
Everybody have a good evening, good morning, depending on where you're at. We'll see you Tuesday. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. And of course, if you want to catch up on past episodes of The Daily Dope, check out this playlist. And if you'd like to see what YouTube's recommending you take a peek at from the channel, just give a click right over here. Of course, I'm Jeff McAleer, and once again, thank you very much for watching.